Tom Schulz, um, serial entrepreneur, and, and then uh, you went to California, and then you came back, and then you co-founded a really promising clean tech company called Entelios. It's about demand response in the smart grid, and you are going to explain your pitch to us. Thank you. <laughs> Das macht keinen Unterschied, ja. Wenn ich frage, wo ist es Sie können ja Jörg nach seinen Erfahrungen. Hier ist halt auch drei. Das ist lustig. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. Okay. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jan, for the introduction. Uh, actually, I prefer to call, me, uh, call myself a computer scientist with an MBA. Um, so, that my background is really in, in technology and the Internet. Um, today, I'm here to talk about Entelios and to introduce demand response. Demand response is important because it gives us another solution option other than choosing between nuclear power plants and CO2 emitting uh, fossil fuel power plants. There's more. There's demand response, for example. Uh, Intelios was founded 2010 in July in Munich and Berlin. We founded the company immediately as an Aktiengesellschaft, as a German shareholders uh, corporation. And our business is, this is the long definition here, is um, building a large network of decentralized electrical devices, could be storage devices, batteries, loads, large um, engines and pumps, or generators. And we use that as a large virtual storage power plant. And with this power plant, we participate in the existing power and electri electricity markets selling it to utilities and grid operators. Let me explain uh, demand response. I think this is the main topic that I, I like to get across today. And then a little bit, if time permits, about Entelios and uh, our short history. Um, there, there's one big thing that you have to realize when you're coming to this power market. And that is that there is no storage, no buffer in the grid. Every minute and every second that somebody is using electricity, that exact amount of energy has to be generated somewhere else in the grid. And again, there is no tank, no buffer, no pipes. It has to happen at the same instant. And therefore, everybody in, this, uh, in, the, uh, in the grid industry, in the electri uh, electric industry, is planning ahead. So uh, the, the big utilities uh, that have to provide electricity to Berlin, for example, are buying electricity ahead, almost three years ahead. Um, and the generators, the people prov uh, owning the power plants, know exactly the schedules they have to drive or operate their plants on today and in three years. Um, so where is the problem? The problem is that, of course, nothing happens according to schedule. Uh, some solar... Uh, photovoltaic plants or wind uh, parks feed in more or less than was predicted. Uh, predictions are okay uh, on average a day ahead or hours ahead, but in five minutes from now there could be a cloud or the wind slows down and that instant a reserve power plant has to be switched on immediately to provide the power and keep the grid frequency and voltage stable. So the, one of the tasks, important task of the grid operator, Übertragungsnetzbetreiber in, in German, is to keep the frequency at 50 hertz and nothing else. They are getting a heart attack at 49.5. If, there's, if the, the generation goes down or consumption goes up uh, unplanned, then immediately they call on these reserve power plants. They have to be switched on. And they are only running a couple hours or days per year. Uh, the rest of the year, they're just standing by. And that is wasted infrastructure and wasted capital, in our opinion. So um, there is a dirty secret. Somebody at, I think, PG&E in California said, there is a dirty secret in the renewable energy business because, because of the intermittency of uh, renewable energy sources, we have to build a reserve power plant behind every wind park. And that doesn't make sense, right? So there must be a different solution. There must be another solution to this reserve power problem. And demand response is that solution, we think. Uh, we cannot get rid of all the, the reserve power plants, 
but some. Um, in electricity grids, demand response is a process to manage the customer consumption, the demand of electricity, in response to supply conditions. So the supplier, the grid operator, is asking the consumers to change their behavior a little bit, to postpone consumption by a couple hours or minutes. Just be flexible with how you plan to use the energy. Um, and that always happens in the moment when there's uh, intermittency, when you have any changes to the schedule, or when prices change. For example, when the prices go up, you might choose to use your electricity a little bit later. Um, this is a paradigm shift. Before demand response, uh, the old implicit contract between generators and uh, customers was that uh, the customers can use electricity in any quantity they want, whenever they want it. In Germany, we say, Strom kommt aus der Steckdose. Don't worry where that comes from. Um, on the other side, the suppliers build a huge overcapacity of reserve power plants and, and, and grid infrastructure to make sure that they can deliver that power whenever it's asked for. So there is this peak power where they have to hold these, these reserve power plants in reserve and that's only used a couple hours per year. With demand response, that changes. The contract changes. The, the customer is now a prosumer. You're actively participating in the, the power market. And that is only possible because there is now communication going on between generators and uh, customers. Uh, maybe in a different way to look at that. If that's the, the, the peak power picture for a certain hour in the day, and you add some intermittent renewable energy, it gives that picture. And with demand response, you can flatten the curve again. Very simplified, but every time you flatten the curve and you average it out, you save this hill, this extra peak. And that extra peak could be one or two nuclear power plants for a country the size of Germany. Demand response is cheaper, faster, and greener than any other infrastructure investment. We're not building power plants. We're not planning, permitting, building them. We don't have uh, political um, uh, groups against us. Um, and it's capital efficient. This is internet and software technology. I hope this is visible in, in the room. Um, if we look at the system as a large scale or scales, on one side, the generators, on the other, consumers. And Telios, the demand response aggregator, is in the middle, watching the system. Whenever, on the uh, generator side, uh, the sun or the wind is producing too much power, we switch on consumers. If there's too many consumers already going online, uh, we switch off others. So we have our devices in the, in the demand side, and we uh, control them minute by minute. Um, one application of this is what's called peak shaving. Um, this is a load, typical load curve that we have every day in every country of the world. There's a, there's a peak around noon in the, in the early afternoon, and there's a peak in the evening. And only for these peaks, you need to provide the maximum capacity, uh, generation capacity. If we succeed to put one of these green, uh, or these, these green boxes, the green tiles that we call them, into valleys, we, get, we can get rid of some capacity, of some uh, power plants. This is how it works. Our network operation center is like the spider in a web. On one side, we communicate with a grid, with the utilities, with the uh, supply side. On the other side, we communicate, and communication means really we control every single device of our participating um, customers uh, in, in, in factories, in manufacturing plants, um, decentral um, generators. Um, in general, we call it actually, by the way, industry meter, not smart meter. We are not in the household or residential market. What are the, these, these devices that we uh, control? Um, for example, ventilation, big air conditioning units, compressed air units, uh, heating, lighting, storage, pumping, everywhere where you see 
um, a large electricity consuming device or generating device or a large battery. And Germany is perfect for us because we have this large variety of industries that are using those devices. Um, actually, in our ongoing pilot project this year, we are starting with breweries, companies based in Munich. So, of course, we, we start with breweries. They have a wider variety of devices where we can learn, um, with cooling, groundwater pumping, storage, and so on. There's the chemical industry, food processing industry, water and air treatment, um, and so on. This is how it looks like in, uh, in the current stage. We, we place, let's, let's, let's call it set-top boxes or cable modems, I'm from the internet business, out there in, in the manufacturing plants. Um, they control over the in industry standard bus systems in, in, uh, of the industrial automation uh, uh, technology, um, pumps and the, and the end devices. And um, we see, we connect those boxes over the internet or cellular uh, networks with our uh, servers in Munich and Berlin. Uh, let's see where the time is. Uh, so wh what's the effect on the economy um, or society in general? Um, we're facing um, uh, targets for renewable energy sources. They should go up. Uh, energy pr uh, productivity should go up. Uh, CO2 emissions should go down. Uh, we also um, want to uh, reduce the, uh, the uh, building more reserve capacities. Um, these are very expensive and difficult to reach targets. On the other side, businesses face electricity, high electricity costs, so they are motivated to, 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 uh, to actually cooperate in the market to, to lower the electricity cost. And actually what we're saying is that uh, the, uh, the CO2 targets cannot be reached without the help and cooperation of the um, demand side. There's no way um, uh, getting there without the participants. Uh, this is one chart, I promise only one chart like this. Um, if you look at all the hours in a year uh, on the x-axis and you look at, you measure the, uh, the load, the electricity that was consumed in this hour on the y-axis, and then you sort it. You see that only five hours in 2008 were responsible of using the last two gigawatts. So if, if we can only change our behavior in these five hours of a whole year, two gigawatts of capacity, this is two nuclear power plants, were not needed. And demand response is only one of three elements, and we think an equal f equally footed element of lowering peak load and the energy consumption in a country like Germany. One is, of course, energy efficiency, which lowers the, the whole um, need for energy generation. The second block is renewable energy. But the third one, which is only active in a couple hours per year, lowers the demand for generation capacity by two gigawatts. And I think that's new um, for, at least for Germany. Uh, in, in the US, uh, demand response is well established by players like Enernock and Converge. And that's because the grid is, uh, is very instable. So they had to come up with an emergency mechanism to save the grid when, when, when a brownout or blackout is coming on. Um, but demand response in, in Germany or the European market has a different application, and we think it's this. It's the overall um, lowering of the peak consumption. <laughs>